For many of us, our appetite for the Word of God is dropping every day. Our love for the teaching of God's Word is dropping every day. And many of us subconsciously, uh, we are beginning to rate a good teaching by how charismatic the preacher was. We are beginning to rate a good teaching by how many people shouted when it was being taught. <laughs> the metrics of, our, of, of how we rate God's Word is changing. And it's because entertainment is becoming more of a God to many of us than the Word of God. That's why. There's no other way to do Christianity than how the Word of God presents it. The Bible says in the book of Jude that the faith was delivered unto us. Christianity is a taught faith. In 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2, the Bible says, Paul was speaking, you can open it, that the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, commit thou unto faithful men, who shall be able to teach others. Yeah, the things that thou hast heard of me among many, many it says the same commit unto faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. The things you have heard, um, heard of me among many witnesses, do the same, commit the same things. The same things. The same things. Unto faithful men. And the goal of committing these things unto faithful men is that they will also be able to teach others because Christianity is transgenerational. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Are you here? Yes, sir. There's no other way to do Christianity if it is not what the Word of God prescribes. And this must, this must be, it must become a revelation in your heart. It must. Because some of us think that we can do this Christian thing anyhow we like. We can just wake up as long as we, shall, we, we, we can just do something that looks like prayer. As long as at the end of the day we'll say, Lord, thank you for a good day. In the morning we'll say, Lord, bless my water and my bread. Whether we go to church does not really matter. Whether we give in church does not really matter. Whether we preach the gospel and evangelize does not really matter. Nothing matters. As long as God is missing my needs, I'm okay. I'm his child, the apple of his eyes, and he died for me. That's how many of us are living, doing Christianity now. There's no other way to do Christianity if it's not what the Word of God prescribes. There's no other way. In fact... <laughs> a person who says that they, are, they are, they are, that they are a Christian and their approach to Christianity is not what the Word of God describes. I can argue the validity of that person's salvation. Yes, there's no other way. Hallelujah. Amen. There's no other way. <laughs> there are many. There are many unbelievers in the church today that identify as Christians. You know how there's a perversion in the world today now that a man can wake up and when he's like maybe 5 or 10 or 15, suddenly he would realize, though I was born a man, I was not destined to be born a man. And so therefore, in keeping with my original, <coughs> in keeping with my original ordination, from today I identify as a woman. Someone say, praise God. You see, that, you see that that level of confusion has crept into the church that you think you can just wake up one day and choose to oh, that's the way many believers are living that's the way many people are living I'm telling you, you don't believe me I'm telling you that there's a, there has been a, an infiltration in the church of so many unbelievers that because of saying one or two things they believe that they are Christians there are people who you ask them now, for instance, how did you get born again? Are you, are you born again? You say, yes, how? I grew up in a Christian home. I go to church every Sunday. The average believer cannot define what the gospel is. Cannot. I was on the evangelism some few months ago, this particular occurrence. And I met a guy. I met a guy. Myself and my wife, she was, we went to the market to buy something. So I was speaking to this guy. And then I asked him, okay, are you, are you born again? He said, yes, I'm born again. I said, wow, I was excited. I said, that means I don't have to preach to you. Let's just have a conversation. Because every, if I don't have a Christian conversation, the one that edifies in a day, is as... so I said, I wanted us to discuss. So I said, okay, so what's the gospel? <laughs> I said, hey, now, the gospel is a place now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know he may never watch this thing, so I can say it. He doesn't even know my name or me or born yet, so maybe when I'm 50, that's when you see it. He said, the gospel is a place. I almost said, I didn't say what is a noun. I said, what is the gospel? You are laughing now. 
<laughs> you know, that's the same thing that made Paul ask those guys in Acts 19. He says, unto what then were you baptized? Unto what then? He says, because we've not even heard that there be any Holy Spirit. Unto what then? That's Paul's, that's, in fact, that's, I, maybe when I'm like 40, I'll write a book called Unto What Then? Because somebody says they are born again, but they don't know what the gospel is. Whereas the same Paul said, it is the gospel that is the power of God unto salvation. But you are saved and you don't know what the gospel is. It's, it's not possible. It's not. God has trapped the power for salvation in a message. The way to be saved is to hear that message and believe that message. So if you don't know the message, what have you heard and what have you believed? 